O God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. O God, the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God, the Holy Ghost, sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers, neither reward us according to our sins, Spare us, good Lord, spare thy people, whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood, and by thy mercy preserve us forever. Spare us, good Lord, from all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation. Good Lord, deliver us from all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all want of charity. Good Lord, deliver us from all inordinate and sinful affections, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us from all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt of thy word and commandment. 
Good Lord, deliver us from lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire, and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine. Good Lord, deliver us from all oppression, conspiracy, and rebellion, from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation, Good Lord, deliver us by thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost. Good Lord, deliver us in all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment. Good Lord, deliver us. We sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God, and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy holy church universal in the right way. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that by both their preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to bless and keep all thy people. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to send forth laborers into thy harvest, and to draw all humankind into thy kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to give to all people increase of grace, to hear and receive thy word, and to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to give us a heart to love and fear thee, and diligently to live after thy commandments. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, the president of this nation, and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy and walk in the ways of truth. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to make wars to cease in all the world, to give all nations unity, peace, and conquered, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, 
that it may please thee to give and preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time all may enjoy them. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings to do the work which thou givest us to do, with singleness of heart as thy servants, and for the common good. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travel. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth, young children and orphans, the widowed, and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to have mercy upon all humankind. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, and ignorances, and to endue us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to grant to all the departed eternal life and peace. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to grant that in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Bartholomew, and all the saints, we may attain to thy heavenly kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. O Christ, Hear us, O Christ, hear us. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation, in you have I trusted all day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. 
All of the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Reading from Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after me, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as, many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between you and every living creature that is, that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all the flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. response to the first reading is the prayer of Manasseh. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O oh Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O oh Lord, I bend the knee of my heart, and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sins, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy, and I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent 
and believe in the good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The response to the second reading is the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he swore to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us together proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with my spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make the churches of evil joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For all the Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And guide us and the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy say known among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the love of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us by thy spirit. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted of Satan, make speed to help thy servants who are assaulted by manifold temptations. And as thou knowest our several infirmities, let each one find thee mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, One God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection 
of thy Son, our Lord. Grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favor, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who didst stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace, so clothe us in thy spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee, for the honor of thy name. Amen. It was really the most innocent of questions. After giving her a long, curious stare, the young man from Milwaukee, and I'm guessing he can't have been more than eight or nine years old, asked my wife, at that time only 23 herself, are you the devil? Now, if you understand the background to this scene, you'll understand why I say it was the most innocent of questions. We were in New Jersey at an international gathering of the various branches of a martial arts school in which we had been participating. Some, but not all, of the branches of this school had deep ties to the organization known as the Nation of Islam. The Milwaukee branch, as well as the Chicago one with which we had come, were two such branches. The young man who asked my wife this seemingly very blunt question was therefore steeped in the teachings of the Nation of Islam. Perhaps less so now than in years past, his question makes perfect sense. The mythology that undergirded the organization's doctrine, at least in the time of its iconic leader, the Elijah Muhammad, included the notion that the lighter-skinned peoples of the world, whose roots can be traced primarily to Europe, are the devils, the dregs of the human race. Now, needless to say, this kind of anthropology has been met with a very negative response from many quarters. But I'm still struck by the innocence and the curiosity of this young man's question. It was obvious from his affect that he wasn't trying to be insulting or confrontational. He just wanted to know, are you the devil? And maybe his question actually had some merit. Today, the first Sunday in Lent, invites us to take a good, hard look at the figure of Satan, or the devil. And when we do, we may see something a little different from what we initially expected to see. Perhaps asking someone if they're the devil isn't quite such a horrible insult after all. Perhaps at times it's even a useful question. Judging by books, movies, and pretty much all other media, humanity is actually pretty obsessed with Satan. Demonic figures and themes seem to be a particular favorite of artists, writers, and filmmakers, and it's been that way for a long time. And apparently, the more depraved the devils are, the better. And of course, Satan figures in the Bible as well. We hear today that immediately following his baptism, 
Jesus was driven out into the wilderness for 40 days, and he was tempted there by Satan. It is from this narrative, also found in greater detail in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, that we get the 40-day season of Lent we observe in the church. But the Bible's Satan is rather different from the one that we get in most books, movies, and other art forms, and probably even quite different from the one of our imaginations. That Satan we owe more to Dante than to the Holy Scriptures. Now yes, by the end of the story, the book of Revelation, Satan has become a hopelessly angry and violent figure, God's mortal enemy. But it was not always so. In the Hebrew scriptures, we read many times of God having a court, a group of heavenly beings that act as advisors to the supreme being and channels of the divine will. One of these figures is the Hasatan, the accuser, someone whose role in the heavenly court is similar to that of a modern-day prosecuting attorney. In the early chapters of the book of Job, we see this quite clearly, where Satan and God actually have a very civil conversation about what is to become of Job. The Hasatan is not the enemy of humanity or a being of supreme evil. The Hasatan actually has a very important function. Throughout the scriptures, God is depicted as any number of things. Builder, potter, gardener, lover. In each of these roles, God's work is to hone the creation, pruning and perfecting it until it is beautiful and glorious in every way. This may at times be very painful for creation, but the ultimate goal is something that is clearly to be desired above all else. And the Hasatan actually helps with this work. Satan wanders about, at least Satan in the older parts of the Hebrew Scriptures, looking for the places where there is weakness, cracks in the creation, and points them out. He keeps on poking at them until they crumble. But this is actually in service of God's ultimate goal of a perfected creation. The problem arises only when Satan gets too full of himself. It's when he decides that being an exalted servant in the household of God isn't enough that he actually needs to be an equal and opposite force to God. It's only then that literally all hell breaks loose. In the great litany that we just chanted at the beginning of this service, we prayed that we would ultimately trample Satan under our feet. The Satan to which we refer there is the out-of-control Satan of the book of Revelation we seek to subdue. But the irony of that is this. In order to do that, we actually need, quite desperately, the little devils in our lives that are still in right relationship with God. Without them, victory can never be had. The Nation of Islam's ideology did not arise out of nowhere. It arose as an accusatory response to an America that its leaders saw as being so corrupt at its core that it lacked the capacity to ever truly acknowledge its black citizens as fully human. 
America needed and still needs to hear that accusation. Perhaps in the near century since it was first leveled, some progress has been made, but the core problem still exists. We, as a nation, still exhibit a tendency to see our fellow citizens not as fellow citizens, but as objects, commodities to be exploited for our benefit. And if those fellow citizens happen to be of a race, sex, class, or walk of life other than the most dominant one, this phenomenon doubles. Now let me be very clear. I'm not leveling this accusation at any particular individual or group of individuals. In fact, if I engage in some honest self-examination, I myself engage in this counterproductive behavior all the time, multiple times a day. I think we all do it, at least to some extent. And this is why we need the devils. We need those who, understanding thoroughly that it is in the spirit of working with God as a servant and not against God as a mortal enemy, will point an accusatory finger at those tendencies that make this creation less than the marvelous and perfect thing it can and should be. So maybe the young man who asked my wife if she is the devil was on to something. And maybe in asking the question, he was being a little devil himself. I am very grateful for the time we spent in the company of the Nation of Islam, uncomfortable and painful as it may have been. It showed me something I needed to be shown. So now, I am grateful for the little devils in my life that make the necessary accusations. Sure, they're unsettling, and sometimes I wish they would just shut up, but I know that they're part of God's project of perfecting creation. So, can we be devils to one another? Can we, in the, always in the spirit of love and in subservience to the God who desires nothing more than that all should come to perfection and glory, point out the cracks? Can we especially note the places where we are devaluing and commodifying our fellow human beings and not rest? until that has been changed? And can we note the places where, with perhaps the best of intentions, we are complicit with a system whose underlying principle is the devaluation of lives? Yes, I know that this is not the most comforting message, but it is Lent, and please don't forget the end result. Jesus came out from 40 days with Satan in the wilderness stronger, not weaker. So will we.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world, saying, O oh, gracious Lord, have mercy on me, upon us. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy world, word and live in unity and godly love. O oh, gracious Lord, have Amen. mercy upon us. Give grace, O oh, Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Mark, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy truth and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we lift up to you this day the Church of the Province of Central Africa. In our Episcopal Diocese, we pray for St. Mark's Church in Berkeley. In our local community, we pray for Marantha Church in Livermore. O oh, gracious Lord, have mercy upon us. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. In our weekly cycle of prayer, we lift up to you these members of our congregation. We pray for Dave and Mary, Tom and Barbara, Michael, Sally, and Charity, as well as those in military service, for Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, and Taylor. O oh, gracious Lord, have mercy upon us. We beseech thee also, so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Gavin, our governor, Bob, our mayor, and all in assemblies or judicial roles at every level of government that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. O oh, gracious Lord, have mercy upon us. Open, O oh Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in the whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. O oh, gracious Lord, have mercy upon us. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O oh Lord, to comfort and succor Olivia, Becky, Brett M, Carl, Carol, Kathy, Chalopi, Dave R, David, Aaron, Esteban, Miroslava, and Tamara, Lennis, Geraldine, Umberto, Candida and family, Janice, Jim and Janet, Josh, Lisa B, Luke, Marge and family, Marie R, Mary L, Mary M, Marissa and family, Monty and Judy, Nick, Nina, Michael, Sandra, and Henrietta, Sarah, Michael E, Sylvia P, 
Steve W. and children, Tamara S., the Herman family, the Purcell family, the Moon family, the Ruzika family, the Bohr family, and the Montgomery family. We also pray for the first responders during this still COVID pandemic. For all nurses, doctors, police, firefighters, and educators, and especially Brad O and Brad S. And we wish healing prayers for all God's creatures in Texas and many other states who are experiencing freezing temperatures, no power, and food shortages. May you all feel God's warm love for you. O gracious Lord, have mercy upon us. And we also bless thy holy name for all the servants departed in this life, in thy faith and fear, especially Sharon H., Linda G., John M., Marie R., Vern P., Joan B., and Elder M., beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. O gracious Lord, have mercy upon us. Grant these prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us now bind our prayers into one in the words of the great thanksgiving. Almighty God, God, Father Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.